Uh, in this video, um, to begin talking about the actuators, I would first like to talk about regulation and uh, some control theory for anyone who might have not had a course like this. So if you have already learned about control theory, then feel free to skip this video entirely. But uh, some basics that you will need for this uh, lecture. So first, uh, to define open and closed loop control, then uh, PID control and uh, stability. Some terms that uh, are necessary to uh, understand the contents here. So first, open loop control means that um, the control action is independent of the process output. What that means is uh, if you have a process that you want to control, like let's say a boiler, uh, that's actually the example I have here. If you want to control the temperature of a boiler, you have a heater that uh, you turn on and off, that's your input, and the output is the temperature of the water inside the boiler. So an open loop control would mean that you have to set the process parameters in advance and they don't change uh, according to the, the process itself. So uh, you have to, to, to make sure that uh, your parameters are correct because there is no feedback loop. So input goes in, we add a gain to it, and then output comes out. Uh, and the gain itself is, um, is just uh, the fraction of the output and the input. So this is the input and this is the output. And uh, in comparison, closed loop control means that um, the control action is dependent on the process output. So there is a feedback loop going from input to output. We feed back the error between the output and uh, the desired uh, target. And uh, this one being the, the feedback path for this uh, feedback of the error. You will see what this means when I talk about PID control. Um, but so fraction of output and input equals gain over one plus gain times uh, the feedback. And just uh, some terms. So set point is uh, uh, abbreviated as SP and PEV is abbreviated uh, for pro uh, process variable. Process variable being the thing you want to control, set point being the target you want to reach. So say you want to boil water, you want to reach 100 degrees Celsius. Process variable is the temperature, set point is 100 degrees. And um, in this case, uh, for instance, the boiler can be controlled by a thermostat, which uh, turns on and off uh, depending on whether the set target or set temperature is reached or not, um, can be as simple as just a bimetal uh, relay or switch. So um, PID control, this is uh, something that uh, you definitely are going to need if you ever have to work on, uh, on anything with electronic control. And uh, yeah, just... Uh, to, to say something like this, uh, PID control was part of the Apollo uh, landers or the, um, the landing modules, so it uh, or the the spacecraft that uh, that took people to the moon. Um, it's quite an old concept, and uh, nowadays it's also really simple to implement in programming. So here you have a pseudocode for a, a PID controller. And uh, this is this is just uh, what you what you need to uh, implement in code to make it work. So in this case, um, the error is defined as a difference between the set point and the process variable at any time moment, and uh, this error is fed back to the input. But the gain consists of uh, three members. There is a, a proportional integral and derivative gain. Uh, integral being the integral of the error and the uh, derivative being um, a time differential of the error and the proportional gain just meaning that you multiply by a constant uh, which is the, the proportional gain. 
So the way this is calculated, proportional gain means uh, the error is multiplied by the gain, which is a constant, uh, as I mentioned. Derivative defines the slope of the error and integral uh, takes into account the past values of the error. And what this adds up to is a smooth uh, process control. If you would like to, you can find tons of materials on the internet on the details of PID control and uh, what it does. Um, I just wanted to uh, show it on a slide that uh, this exists to anyone who hasn't studied about it. And the tuning of these uh, gains, well, you can do it manually, but uh, there are semi-automatic methods such as the Ziegler-Nichols uh, method, or even automatic tuning is possible in, um, in a program. And uh, yeah, finding the optimal gain is the key to success. So if you look here, if you set the gain too high, then you get an overshoot. If you set the gain too low, then you will have a very slow convergence. And uh, both of them are, uh, are suboptimal. Also, if you have a very high gain, you will get a really big oscillation around your target, target being here the, the blue reference signal. And uh, so to reduce the oscillation, but to have uh, an optimal rise time, you need to find the optimal gains. And this one is only just playing with the uh, proportional gain and not taking the other members into account. So um, that's what it comes down to. And stability, more specifically, bounded input, bounded output uh, type of stability means that for any finite input, so bounded, uh, not infinite, um, you receive an uh, likewise a bounded finite output. So what it means mathematically is that as time goes to infinity, so that's what you see on this graph, um, there always exists a boundary or a bound uh, for which every uh, input and every time moment, the if the input is bound, then the output will be below this uh, this uh, boundary k for every time step beyond the first. And yeah, to to help, uh, I have it also written out in words, um, so you can you can see it on the slideshows. And uh, up here is uh, an example from um, from my work where you see that um, that. There is a threshold above which uh, we never go with our uh, with our output. So this is definitely a stable system over time, and uh, there exists a boundary k for which it is true that for no finite input does the output exceed this boundary, and that's actually quite uh, visible when you see. If I just continued onwards into infinity, it would never rise above this uh, k boundary. So um, why I talk to you about all of this is because um, if you need to work on heat or heating, heat transfer, thermal regulation, then um, you will need to take all of these things into account. And in fact, in one of the simulation labs, you will work on, um, on a heat transfer simulation. However, in that uh, simulation, for the sake of simplicity and for uh, a fast solution, we will um, use a temperature boundary condition and not take into account uh, the regulation in the model. It's not quite necessary. We look only at the steady state when um, the system has already reached uh, stability over time and it will not go above or below uh, the, the steady state temperature. So to, to clarify the terminology, set point is your target, in this case uh, 61.5 degrees Celsius, process variable being the reaction temperature. In this case, this is a micro reactor, which is being heated for nucleic acid amplification. And you need to reach this target temperature for the reaction to happen at an optimal rate. Uh, SSE being steady state error, which is um, the deviation from your set point over time. And uh, 
the input being current in this case because we do jowl heating so in any conductor uh, if we pass through a current then uh, uh, by means of, uh, of electrical resistance you generate heat and uh, the amount is uh, uh, square of the input current times the resistance that's the heating power that you get this one is uh, this uh, device that, um, that I'm going to say a, a few words about or I say a few words about in another lecture it's a, a handheld uh, single-use um, isothermal PCR test for uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea and this one uh, had an open loop control for heating so in this one uh, there is a, a passive heating element that was designed in just the right way to reach this temperature range under all conditions that uh, were possible for this test so under the defined operating ambient temperature range and, and whatnot it always reaches the right uh, temperature. In this video, uh, I talked about uh, open and closed loop control, uh, PID control, and uh, stability.